What's up everybody? Welcome back to the VSO Gun Channel. It's awesome to have you here as always. Thank you for watching. And I have a really cool collaboration coming your guys' way today that we've been working on for months. So a lot of people would think that because I do guns on the internet that like my YouTube feed is just packed full of a bunch of gun stuff. And that is not actually the case. I have a whole bunch of different varied interests that I absorb information from uh, on the platform. And one of the ones that I tend to gravitate to in my like personal life is medieval interests and things like that. Well, one of the channels that I really enjoy watching is Todd from Todd's Workshop. Hi, it's Todd of Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today I'm back with a very special collaboration with Kurt from the VSO Gun Channel over in the States. And he deals in medieval archery. Well, some months ago, he was doing a, a video in response to a story that he heard. And actually, you know what? I'm just going to let him talk to you about it. I met a girl from Sarajevo, and she had told me that as well as using guns on the front line, they'd been using bows because somebody had found out that they shoot through sandbags and water butts. I just recounted the story. I, I was about to do a test. I shot a sandbag. Lo and behold, the arrow went through. It was interesting. So after he published that video, I got to talking with him, and... I was like, you know what? That's really interesting. I had never thought about it like that. I've actually never even actively shot firearms at sandbags. So why don't we do a collaboration? Why don't we go out and you do the bow stuff, I'll do the gun stuff, and we'll just see what the results end up being. And while I know a decent amount about bows, he's got a whole bunch of them, and I figured I'd just let him tell you about them. Starting at the beginning here, We've got uh, the Azza bow by the mighty Jorg Sprav. So this is a fun little, um, well, lever action thing, really. So it just loads up like that. Shoots lightweight little bolts. Got the big end of the scale is uh, 155 pound, I think it is, uh, compound crossbow. Then we've got a rather old fashioned compound longbow, 75 pound. So we've got the arrows for that. Uh, it's been a while since I've shot this, so it might be interesting, but I should get one on target in the end. And then we have uh, just a 150 pound regular crossbow. Also, he's preparing another video side by side with this one that compares the two side by side. And I think it's very well done. I have seen the final cut and uh, it's definitely something you guys should look at. So I'm gonna go ahead and have it linked down below as well. Without further ado, let's shoot some stuff. So one of the things that I thought was really cool about Todd's original video was that when the arrows were going through the sandbag, they were deflecting a fair amount. So to be able to measure bullet deflection, should it go through the sandbag, I'm gonna to need to mark the center. And I can only think about one way to mark the center. I don't know about you guys, but um, uh, we do it like this. We find the center of the sandbag, and then we start at the bottom and draw a line right like that. And then the wild card in the pack, because we've all got to find out. Harpoon gun. If this was a movie, there'd be a harpoon gun involved. I said that we we're going to start at the bottom and work our way up. So what we're going to be doing is shooting 22 first out of a 22 pistol. And I will throw up a, a close-up of the ammunition that we're going to be shooting. So everybody who perhaps doesn't really understand everything dealing with firearms has an idea of the scale that we're talking about. But this is pretty much the smallest popular caliber that you find in most American homes. So this is 40 grain stuff. So here we go. We're shooting it out of a Volkhorsten Scorpion pistol with a Bowers Group Biddy suppressor on the end of it. Entry wound for the 22. And you guys knew this already, but we've got no exit on the 22 long rifle. So keeping with the theme, we're gonna move up and Todd doesn't use hearing protection in a lot of his videos, so we're gonna try not to use hearing protection in ours either. We're gonna use some suppressors because we can. We're gonna move up to nine by 19. This is typically what you think of when you think of a popular handgun caliber. It is probably the most popular handgun caliber in the United States of America. And we're gonna be shooting out of Glock 19 with a, uh, a Griffin Optimus on the end of it. So here we go. Okay. Entry wound, nine millimeter. And you guys knew this already, but no exit. 75 pound compound longbow. So that was clean through. I don't think there's any point going to look at that. 
But what we can do is judge how deeply it is in the target and get some sort of empathy really for what's going on. Moving right along, you guys saw this one at the beginning of the video. This is like your quintessential AR. And this is in 5.56 NATO. This is what you think of NATO small arms. Uh, most NATO rifles, unless they're in 7.62 NATO, they're probably chambered in this. So this is, uh, again, probably the most popular caliber in the United States of America uh, today, if you're not counting nine millimeter. So I also took the liberty of jostling our bag a little bit just to make sure that it didn't have any bullet tracks through it in case I hit one. 5.56 five, goes in. I was shooting a little bit low. That gun zeroed for 50 yards. We're shooting at 25. And I don't know, boys and girls. I don't see an exit wound on that guy. So we call this guy the White Russian. Full video out on this guy. It's based on a CMMG mutant. And it is a short barreled rifle, by the way. So it, it's a it is a fire breathing monster, but we have tamed it down a little bit as far as the flash report is concerned with this can on the end. Energetic Arms Fox, full video on that one as well. But this one's chambered in 762 by 39 which is known to be a little bit better at penetrating barriers than 55 grain 556. Five, We're gonna find out. Here we go. This is the same caliber that an AK-47 would be chambered in. Did I miss? I think I might have missed. So I totally missed right that time. Barely skimmed through there. You can see it didn't hit hardly any sand. And we do have some deflection down here. So, I mean, we are talking some significant deflection off that bag. So I got to shoot that one again. Okay, so this is wild. There's our entry. But you can see the way that the bag's situated the sand levels right there so this barely had an inch of sand or so that it went through it pooped out and went right there hit sideways did not have enough energy to make it through this board and this is like some rotten crap that my brother tore out of his house so you can see there's not a whole lot to that thing I have really big fingers so that doesn't really help but essentially not enough energy to go through the board after it went a, through a little bit of sand i have to shoot it one more time and see if i can get a good shot on that bag of sand okay that looked like a solid hit to me i'm not entirely sure but again i was wrong the last time let's go look that was also a very poor shot and i'll be honest i'm getting a little bit frustrated now so we're just gonna we're gonna go for it. I hope that, that was a good one. Check it out. Here's our hit. And this is a good solid hit this time because it actually cracked in instead of out. Like before we had this big blowout over here because it didn't get enough enough meat in, in the bag. This is where we came out this time, and you can see that we cracked through the whole width of the sand. When we go to our backboard, this is our impact. And you can see that it had just enough energy to tear the cardboard and make that impact on the backboard. The last up of our serious bows is 150 pound compound crossbow. Now I'm using it now with my medieval weight, medieval style longbow arrows, which I've modified to shoot off a crossbow. I've done a whole series of films under the name Lockdown Longbow. So this isn't one of them, but go check them out. Basically, this shoots the same weight arrow as a 160 pound English longbow would have done in 1400 or something. There's one thing we know about the ingenuity of mankind, is when it comes to war, they find what works. And if they were using these bows down at Sarajevo, you can bet somebody sooner or later would have tried it with a heavy arrow. So let's see what happens. So, you know, I was gonna, make a sandbag wall because Todd wanted to do a sandbag wall because everybody was kind of mean to him in his comments about how one bag wasn't enough to really do anything to anything. So essentially we were gonna do that, but turns out that we didn't need it. Although I will say that I am now done screwing around 
with that stupid sandbag. So, time to step up to 762 NATO, also known as 308. In fact, I believe that this is actually 308 Winchester ammunition. So, here we go. Oh, yeah. All I can say is what in the actual entry. And I don't see an exit wound on this. I mean, it blew out the bottom of this bag, probably from pressure, but I see nothing here. I'm gonna have to sift through this bag because we don't have anything that is readily apparent on our board over here either. I think that bag turned profile stopped a 308 round, which that's saying something. I, I'm impressed with that. Like, if there's a 308 projectile in there, I am very impressed. Sometime later. I have enough daylight to see it now. But that is a decent chunk of lead there. So that is definitely a 30 caliber round. And it's the wrong color to be our 9 millimeter round. So that thing is jacketed out quite a bit. I'm going to save that. Even more later. He's asked me to come out and shoot two sandbags uh, side by side uh, with something heavy. And so I went through my arsenal and I'm like, well, what do I have that's heavy that we haven't already tried? And I settled on what I think is a relatively common caliber that most people in the world that have any semblance of firearms would, would understand. And that is a 4570. So to give you guys a gander at what this thing looks like, this guy. And I specifically picked this one today because all the bullets that we've shot up to this time are either lead or lead copper mixes, which is a standard manufacturing process. This one is an all copper solid and it is designed to do some hydrostatic stuff. But in my experience with these rounds, they go through things. And because copper's harder than lead, I'm hoping that this is gonna be able to cook through our barrier today. We're gonna to find out. This is a Henry. X4570, and I don't think I mentioned it earlier, but the 308 rounds that we were shooting were a 150 grain. This is a 325 grain all copper. So this has got a lot more weight to it. More than twice the weight. Uh, a little bit slower, but approximately the same speed. We're still talking over 2,000 feet per second. So. <clears throat> Go take a look. The back is filled with smoke. <laughs> okay, so let's look here. Uh-oh. What do we got here? We made it through one bag. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and set this guy down. Going down. And we've got a second impact here where it went through. You can see it's kind of going sideways at this point in time. Did it come out the back? Guys and gals, I do not see a hole in the back of that bag, which means that that thing is probably still in there. Two sandbags laid side by side or a double thickness of sandbag wall. It's looking pretty good for defeating of most small arms. I was able to recover the 325 grain copper spun that we shot earlier without much incident. It was laying right there on top of it. I will clean this up for a nice shot for you guys, but essentially went in a few inches and that's all. Let's talk about the differences here, because clearly there's something different going on. And I think there's a couple different competing things that we have to talk about. I don't think that anybody really knows what's going on, but I have my theories. And my theories are this. One, mass distribution of the projectile, velocity of the projectile, and then the method by which those two things convey energy to the target. So if we talk about an arrow, generally speaking, you're not getting massive quantities of energy transfer to the, uh, to the target. If you look at Todd's calculations in his video, uh, the bullets are producing many, many times the energy of the, of the arrows. The function of a bullet though, is to take that energy that has been created and transfer it to the target. Mass and velocity, do some math in there and you get the energy. By contrast, if we look at arrows, arrows 
have a little bit different method of mass distribution. Usually, if you look at an arrow, and I'm not an arrow expert, I'm not going to pretend to be, but I do bow hunt. Usually, you've got somewhere close to the mass of your head in your shaft. And I cannot believe I just said those two on the internet. Now, of course, that all varies, but there has to be some reasonable distribution in there for the arrow to fly properly, else it would not fly properly. Taking that mass and distributing it that way, and then whipping it up and launching it, the idea then is to take all that mass that is now stacked up over the length of that arrow and then stack it on top of the point. And the difference there is while the bullet strikes and dumps all of its energy, tumbles, breaks apart, especially the high velocity stuff that we saw, definitely breaks apart. The arrow, by contrast, uses that stacked up mass to then push itself through the medium. The idea of the arrow is to go in and slice through stuff, cutting things apart and then causing bleeding and all that sort of stuff, and that's the method by which it kills. The bullet, by contrast, is designed to zip in there really fast and catastrophically break up. And we can see that the faster the bullet, the more it breaks up and the more lethal it tends to be, statistically speaking. You need not look any further than uh, what we did here today. You can see that we recovered the 9mm projectile, and it was basically, I don't want to say that it was reloadable, I didn't really measure it, but it looked like a 9mm bullet. If you look at the rest of the projectiles that we recovered, they were pretty jacked up because they were doing the expansion thing. Basically, there was so much energy involved that it's now deforming the projectile, dissipating as much energy as it possibly can. So that's my theory. Your mileage may vary. Let's talk about it in the comments section down below. Thank you guys for joining us here today on the VSO Gun Channel. I, again, had an excellent time in today's video. I hope that you guys did as well. This one's been a long time coming. And again, links in the description box down below for all you guys that want to go over and check out Todd's stuff. And for all the people who are new here that came over from uh, Todd's video, welcome. And uh, hopefully we can help you guys learn some stuff about firearms and uh, it'll be a great time. Thank you again for joining us and hopefully we'll see you on a future video here at the VSO Gun Channel. One harpoon gun, one sandbag, no Hollywood actors in sight, but let's see what happens.